Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I've got a couple exciting things going on for you. So I need to get my Mini Cooper's engine pulled and I gotta fix it up to make it running again. So before I go ahead and actually go through with that procedure, what I wanna do is clean out the garage or at least give me some extra space for me to work with because I'm gonna be taking a lot of stuff out of that engine bay. So some of the stuff that I did have up there, you can see right here on this cart. And I've got a couple of airbags both uh, driver side, I've got passenger side, I've got side curtain, and even seat belt tensioners. Today in this video, we're gonna be blowing all of it up and clearing up some space. So on this cart, I've got the airbags that we're gonna be blowing up today. I've got two standard airbags that you'll see on your steering wheel. We're gonna be blowing those up. We've got a seat belt pre-tensioner right here. This is an explosive style, so we have a little explosive found inside of here that shoots out and retracts the seat belt down towards this bolt. What that does is it actually secures the seat belt once you have it locked in place. It secures it and tightens you up to the seat. Going on from there, we have one new style side curtain airbag. We have an older style side curtain airbag, and you can even just see the way that these two are made and like assembled, you can see that there's a pretty big difference between these two. So these are all so far pretty small airbags. The largest one that we have on the car is the one found on the passenger side dash. So this one right here has the most amount of explosives behind it, and it also has two extra leads on the end of it for extra power to ignite this airbag. So today I'm gonna to show you how to get all of this set up, what I've done so far, and how you can safely get this done too if you wanna try this at home. I would definitely, definitely take extra precautions when working with all this stuff because airbags are not something to joke around with. These are explosives that you have in your car and if you play around with these and you do something wrong that you're not supposed to, you could definitely injure yourself. So definitely take the cautions. If you're not confident with going anywhere near this stuff, do not attempt this at home. I just want to get that out of the way before I continue with this video. So what I'm going to get started with first is that take note of how I oriented these airbags. Everything that you see right here is not going to be able to say injure us should it accidentally go off. So this airbag, the way that it works is it's mounted in on the bottom side, it's secured in place and the airbag comes out. So the way that I store it is not airbag face down. I have it so that it's got the metal backing on the ground so that if it goes off, the only damage that we're going to have is the airbag is going to come up in the air. If we had it the other way and stored it like this, if this accidentally went off, this would not only explode the airbag, but the entire thing would go flying and could potentially hurt you. So just use your common sense as to what way the airbag goes and how it explodes when it's activated. So this right here is an airbag, how it would come out of your car. Once you disconnect the airbag wire on the back and the wiring connector found right there for the horn, once you have those out, this is your airbag. And this is all that we need to get this thing blown up. Now I'm gonna be making this a little bit easier for myself only because we're not gonna be exploding this inside of a car. We're gonna explode this outside of a car. So what I have right here is one airbag that's ready to be ignited and blown up versus the standard airbag that we literally just removed from a vehicle. So right here I have this wire and this one that are both for the airbag. You can see I do not have any kind of connector on it. It's literally just the wire that's spliced without the connector on each end. So I've got both of the reds twisted up together and both of the yellows twisted up together. This wire right here, as I mentioned before, this is for the horn mechanism. So we have the power going through here and the ground going through another component on the actual frame of the airbag. So we're not going to be using this at all. You can just ignore that. What we're going to be doing is making this basically like this. So we need to take off this connector right here because on the inside of it, we've got the four pins and we need to supply power and ground to both of those for it to ignite. So what we're going to have to do is break or take this little piece off the connector, cut that little sheathing, the yellow sheathing that's holding all the wires together. We're gonna cut that, bring back any of the heat wrap that we have on the wire and have it so that it's exposed so we can put a set of alligator clips on that and then ignite this thing. So I'm first gonna start by pulling back the sheathing that we have on here. So this is just holding the wires together so it's nice and easily um, nice and easily secured so that once it's installed in the car, it's not going to be making a mess. So you're just going to cut right down the center of it, and you can see that we have more of the wire exposed. So just continue that until you have the entire thing removed. 
So once we're at this stage, you need to either take off or break off this little connector so we can get access to these wires. What I'm gonna do to make my life a little bit easier so I don't need to actually take this off is I'm just gonna cut these wires. So I'm gonna use these little snips to cut off those and the same thing to cut the red. So once we're at this stage, what we then need to do is bring back the wire so we have some exposed part of the wire um, on there so we can hook up our alligator clips to it. So I'm just gonna be using a set of wire strippers right here. Just gonna slide one wire at a time in there. You can see that it brings it back and we have our exposed wire on this versus this one here. We're gonna do the same thing for both wires. Once you have them both off, just literally twist these two wires together so that they're basically in one. So we have the power through one set of wires and the ground through the other. We're gonna just bring both of these back as well for the red wire. Twist them. And then we can start to blow these things up. I want you guys to learn a thing or two from this. I don't wanna just have it so that we're gonna have some fun. We are gonna have some fun, but that's not my priority one. So right here I have the airbag hooked up outside in a safe distance with nothing really else around me. So I've got these wires hooked up, the leads with alligator clips, found one here hooked up to the yellow wires, and I have another one that's hooked up to the red wires. So both of these are connected to a set of wires that are going to keep me a safe distance away. So both here, I have one wire that's stripped back. I used my wire strippers for that, and I did the exact same thing for this one. Now I'm going to try this with two different ways. Now realistically, I have a 9 volt battery, and if I can hook that up to both of these and set the airbag off, I will do that because that's a very small, easy way to get this to work. If that's not going to work, I'll get a car battery. It's a little bit heavier and more inconvenient, but it will definitely get the job done. The only reason why I'm wondering if the uh, 9 volt battery that I'm using will not work is because cars are meant for 12 volts. So, you know, we're going to give this a shot. If it works, awesome. If not, I'll go huck out that battery out of a car and we'll blow these things up. But let's give this a shot. So the first time attempting to blow up the airbag, I was using a 9 volt battery and I thought that was the reason why it didn't deploy. Whatever I tried, it didn't work, so what I did then was I switched to a 12 volt battery hoping that it would solve my issue. I said, what the heck, why the heck aren't you going off? I got all of these airbags from a friend who got all these airbags from a recall at the dealership. So I was thinking to myself, okay, are all these airbags dead? I didn't quite give up there. I then decided to switch up the wiring for the power in the ground to the airbag. I didn't have a wiring schematic of how the airbag was supposed to get power, so I just went with what I thought was logical. I then found out that wasn't the case. I decided to switch up the wiring for the airbag so that each one of the leads to my battery got one red wire and one yellow wire. And well, let's find out what happens. It worked. Got it. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> the bag's warm. Oh, that's yeah, warm. You can feel the shit. smoke. Yeah, well, for people that haven't seen this, I want to show them. You can see that this is literally a bomb with a bag attached to it. So, if you guys saw, that happened very, very fast. The bag is still warm, and you can see there's little holes in the back side of it for any excess air to come out. So, you can smell the gunpowder from this happening. Yeah, pretty cool. So this is airbag number one. So we kind of wanted to get like a little baseline as to how loud and how stupid this was going to be. And yeah, it's definitely loud. If you guys want to do this, definitely have ear protection. Ear protection and just in case, eye protection. Just like Luca, us. open up the bag completely. Like rip it open? No, like how big did it inflate to? Oh. So see that little hole right there? That like, that circle? That's where your That's face where, goes. Yeah, actually. <laughs> So your face is supposed to hit that mark while you're in the driver's seat. So in the event of an accident, the bag is going to fully inflate and your face is going to hit that. And when the bag is fully inflated, what's going to happen is your face is going to basically cushion that air pocket that's inside that airbag. Hopefully that bomb will save your life. So I'm going to hook up this next airbag. So this is the passenger side top curtain airbag. I'm going to hook one of these wires up for there. That's our positive. This is our negative, and then we're going to attach the other end up to either a car battery or a battery charger. Any kind of 12-volt source will do the trick. 
So we have the positive side hooked up to the battery charger, and here comes the negative. So as soon as I make this contact touch, the airbag, it will deploy. Cool, huh? Cool. So this is one of the smaller ones. Oh. One of the bigger airbags. I would never thought you'd hear that when it goes off. Well, the thing is, in the event of an accident, your Here. priority is not listening to the airbags. That you're in an accident. Your car crash. Yeah. So. You're kind of in shock because you're going towards something at stupid fast speeds. That's kind of shocking that that But this is it. So this is the curtain airbag. This is the one that deploys from the top of between the A pillar and the B pillar. So this one comes down and covers the window. Pretty cool, huh? So this little bracket here would be mounted up on the top of that, and this plastic piece would break down, come down and cover the windshield, or the, the side window, so you don't hit your face on the glass. So they all look like they're pretty much made out of the same material too, with the same kind of holes. Like the yeah. We got mill mass purses. Here we go. Right there. <laughs> I want someone to make a shirt out of that. <laughs> you know what someone should do? Punish it right on here. Oh shit. So next up, I'll be deploying one of these. So this is what is hooked up to each seat frame that you have on the car. Now this kind of mechanism for the airbag, or not really airbag, but this safety mechanism is only found on the front of vehicles. Typically, um, what this does is you'll have a little explosive charge found inside of here. And what's gonna do is it's gonna pull and shoot out air from the explosion out. And this little part right here for the seat belt is actually hooked up to a cable. So if you take back this little, let's call it the frame. If you take back this little like plastic piece off, you'll see a cable that goes from the top, hooking up to here, down, and it comes around this pivot point and comes around here. So when this deploys, this should retract down and lock that seat belt in place. So when you're normally driving, the seat belt isn't actually super tight, but if you get in an accident, you want it to be. So that's exactly what this thing does. This is called the seat belt pretensioner, and we're gonna be blowing this thing up. Now this isn't going to be as dramatic as an actual airbag, but this is still a safety mechanism nonetheless. So let's take a look at this. So I have two sets of wires, one here and one here. This first one that's hooked up to the top is the indicator for the seat belt. So if you don't have your seat belt in here, you will get a light on your dash, and that's what that's for. We're gonna be disregarding that one, and we're only gonna be working with this one back here, the bottom one. So this is just a positive and negative. If you can see right there, we're gonna hook this up in the exact same way that we've been doing it before. And as soon as we do that, this will retract down and basically save your life. So right here we have the negative hooked up to our connector and our positive hooked up to this next connector. Now when you're setting these down, make sure that these are not going to touch because you're supplying power to these lines. So once you have that out of the way, we're gonna be able to access and basically turn on this bomb, have this work, and you should see this overall size shrink. So we have power. Three, two, one. So you can see this basically, this collapsed all the way down. So if you remember, there was like a little accordion type piece found right here, and now it's completely shrunk. So if you had your seatbelt on, it would yank it down and hold you into the seat. So next up right here, I have the older style side curtain airbag. So this, when this explodes, comes out like that. So we're gonna have this secured up to, let's call it the B pillar, between the B pillar and the C pillar on the roof. And when this deploys, this is going to put a curtain over the rear window. So it's kind of similar to the front one. This one, from the looks of it, is going to be a little bit bigger. But again, they all work the exact same way. All that we have is a positive and negative on our cable. So we have just these two right there. And once you set that off, once you supply the artificial power to this unit, Instead of having the SRS unit deploy the airbag, we're supplying the power ourselves and mechanically setting these things off. So, again, we're gonna do the exact same thing as before. So we have power and our ground. I'm just gonna back up the camera because this airbag is a little bit bigger. So when I'm doing this, I'm having it so the airbag is gonna face outwards. Once you're, whenever you're ready, you put your glasses on, 
your ear protection. Let's supply our power. And in three, two, one, we're gonna supply our ground. So in three, two, one. Nice! How's it going? Yeah. So there is again another side curtain. So there is our spot that you would hit your head on uh, in the event of an accident. And there's the smoke that's puffing out of it. Yum. So there's that. There's another airbag done and out of the way. So this is one of the smaller airbags that we're gonna have. The two biggest ones that we're going to have are on the steering wheel. That's the second biggest one, and the biggest one is going to be the passenger side. And I'm going to show you guys next what that one is, because that bomb in that airbag is huge. So here comes the big one. This is the passenger side front airbag. This has probably a bomb twice the size as the standard one found anywhere else in the car. So this has two extra leads for it, for the extra power to ignite this bomb. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So we have this front piece up front that should split in the middle when this goes off. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. So here goes the power, and here comes the negative. So three, two, one. Just like before when we had both of the wires wired up together, they didn't go off. So I had to switch them up and make it so that one red and one yellow were connected to each one of the connectors. So here's the positive. And in three, two, one. And in three, Two, one. And in three, two, one. Nice. Well, that's why some of the time people experience burns from airbags. Right there is a perfect example as to why you would see that. Yeah, especially if it hits your face. So as you can tell, it definitely did split the, uh, the like the front cover, which is what it's supposed to do. And that's all the smoke from that bomb. So this is typically the biggest one inside your car. Careful, it might be hot. It's, it's hot. Pretty cool. So like what I was saying, sometimes these wires, they need to be split, so you get a yellow and a red one to get them to go. Sometimes they like being together. Um, if you have a wiring schematic, you can actually tell how they're supposed to be wired, but I just kind of went with it, and as you can tell from the first time, it didn't go, but the second time, it definitely did. So now comes the fun part. We're gonna be playing around with another airbag, and I was thinking about how I can make this a little bit fun. I've got a watermelon in front of it, and I wanna see what's gonna happen to it. Now, depending on how close you sit up to the front steering wheel's airbag, that will determine how much force that airbag has upon you. If you have enough space that the airbag deploys in front of you, and your face cushions it when you get in an accident, you're going to be safe. But if you are right up to it, and you're way too close to the airbag. The airbag is going to hit you, hurt you, and not allow you to come forward. So what could happen is you're still moving forward while the airbag is coming towards you, and you're gonna hurt yourself really badly. I wanna replicate that by putting the watermelon really close to it, and put the airbag sideways so it'd be like you're driving in a car, way too close. Now, it's kinda hard to tell with a watermelon because I can't tell or ask it, hey, are you hurt, are you bruised, whatever, but we can, we can see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna hook the camera up to the tripod, hook up another uh, driver side airbag up to my power leads, and we're gonna see what happens to this watermelon. So for this next test, I've got a little bit of a distance between the watermelon and the airbag. I've got the airbag set up on a platform so that when it goes off, it's not going to move backwards. What's gonna happen is the airbag is gonna stay there and whatever force from the airbag itself is gonna happen, it's gonna push outwards. And hopefully, it'll cause damage on the watermelon to prove a point that you shouldn't stay super close to your airbag while you're driving. So that's what I wanna to get to today. So I've got that wired up from the airbag we're gonna follow it over here to a safe distance and I'm gonna hook up the leads from the battery charger up to the leads for the airbag, blow this up, and let's see how far this watermelon goes. 
So with the airbag and the watermelon on the bottom left side of the screen, put your safety stuff on. We've got the positive lead hooked up to the airbag, and now let's hook up the negative side. So in three, two, one. So imagine if that was your head, right up to that airbag. That would not have felt good. You saw how much force just alone came out of that? Look at the watermelon. Let's take a look at it. So it still looks to be fully intact, but the thing is, oh, that's a soft spot. Oh yeah, you can definitely feel that. That guarantee did not feel good. So if I could ask the watermelon how he's doing, oh yeah, he's hurt. <laughs> oh, he's definitely hurt. Now that just goes to show that you wouldn't exactly necessarily break bones, but it would hurt like a son of a you know what. If you guys have a seatbelt, set the car up right, sit in the proper spot. So let me show you quickly what the proper spot is. The way that we had it set up is that if your face is this close to the airbag, you're going to be really hurt in the case of an accident and this goes off. So the way that it should be is not even like this. You shouldn't be this close to the airbag because this still needs to deploy and when you get in an accident, that's when you go into it. So what you need to do is have it set up so that you can get both of the top of your wrists on the top of the steering wheel comfortably. After that, you also need to be able to put your foot underneath the brake pedal. If you can do both of that safely, you're in the clear. Now, even if you're a very small person, let's say that you're, give me a second, give me a second. Let's say you're this close and you really can't get around it. I know that there's a lot of small people, including even my mom. My mom is small, she's only five foot. So in that event, if you're small and you are always sitting this close to the airbag, you can actually go to the dealership and ask them to deactivate it because if you have this activated and you are forced to sit this close to the wheel, this is actually going to hurt you more than it is going to save you. If you're that small and you have your seatbelt, this will do you plenty good. It's still not as safe as having that, but if you're really small, there's not really any way of getting around it. I really hope you guys learned a thing or two from me playing around with these airbags. These are very dangerous, but if you know how to use them, if you know how to play around with them, and if you are safe on the way you set up yourself in your car, you're not gonna have any problems with these bombs. These bombs are actually going to save your life. But if you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.